This is Steve Miller, and you're watching Entering Into Space. And today I'm going to show you how I reduce the stars in my image. Okay, so here we have an image of the Heart Nebula that I took uh, back almost at the end of the month here, 1031. And over here you can see what I've done so far is I've done a basically background align. I've lined all the channels. So my red, blue, green channels all have an equal value. Um, I did a little pre-curve here to see where the nebulosity was. And I did a gradient with exterminate, uh, gradient exterminator. <laughs> Uh, I did some background noise reduction and then I did a curves adjustment to bring out uh, the highlights of the details of the nebula and went through the selected mask process to smooth out some of the fainter stuff and sharpen up some of these details in here. Then I ran the whole image through the camera raw filter um, and just kind of make everything pop. So now you can see <clears throat> we've got quite a bit of stars in here that uh, a lot of people don't mind. But to me, I think they kind of take away uh, from you know, the, the subject matter here, which is the, the heart nebula. So what I want to do is uh, show you kind of a modified way of how I've come up with uh, reducing the stars and then bringing back uh, some of the brighter ones to give it depth to me. Astrophotography processing is all about creating depth uh, in the different color schemes and also the stars. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do in here is um, flatten this image. So we come up here to uh, layer, flatten image. So now we just have the one layer over here. And we're going to duplicate that layer. So we've got a background and a background copy. And with the background copy selected, I used to use a method of the color range and highlights, which would be select color range and highlight. But what I've found over here in a plugin that I have, I've talked to you guys before called the um, astronomy action tool set. It has an action here called select brighter stars. So I'm going to choose that and I'm going to run that one. And what I've found is it, it's a more accurate action for selecting your stars. Whereas if you go into the color range highlights, it's also picking up a lot of the nebulosity. And, and when you would zoom in after a star reduction, I'd see where it would kind of mess with some of the nebula. So this really has uh, isolated just the stars. And the brighter stars, obviously. You see there's some stars in here it didn't even touch. And, and they're already reduced. We don't need to mess with them. So one thing I want to do is I want to kind of modify this selection to get a little bit more of the star. So we come up here to select, modify, expand. We're just going to expand it by one pixel because you see it's already um, around the star mostly. And obviously the bigger, brighter stars in here, they're already bright. We don't, we don't really want to encroach into some of the nebulosity around the stars. Uh, but we do want to get, we do want to get these, uh, these fainter stars in here. We do want to select a little bit more of them. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to go to select, modify, and we're going to feather that selection by two pixels. So we've got a nice round selection around each one. So we're going to zoom back out here and then I am going to hit control H and that basically hides the selection. The stars are still selected. Hit control H again. You see they're still there. Control H. Now you can actually see uh, what you're doing to that selection. So with that selection hidden, we come over here to filter other minimum. Now, I've noticed um, that this usually comes default to squareness. When you do that, man, it just wipes the stars out. You see that? 
And watching uh, Trevor Jones on one of his videos, he was commenting on this choice that you have now here that he thinks that maybe Adam Block may have put in, which is uh, roundness. So with that selected, and you see we've got our stars kind of back, but if we do our preview, you can definitely see that it's reducing the stars. And one thing I've noticed is we have this range slider in here that we can adjust. And I've noticed that if I, like, let's say it's at 1.7 now, uh, turn the preview on and off. Once I click OK, it reduces them even more. And I'll show you if I click OK, see it's, it's definitely done more than what the preview shows. So it's a little misleading. Uh, to me, I think that might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to come back up in here in my history, uh, click on minimum, and I'm going to erase that or delete that action. And run it again, filter, other, minimum. And let's set that at like a 1.4. Unfortunately, it's guesswork because the preview doesn't give you a good um, view of how much it's reducing the stars. But we're going to click OK. I like that. So now all of our stars have been reduced. We're going to uh, unhide that selection and then we're going to take that selection and we're going to put it up on top of our background copy here by hitting control J. So here's our stars that we've selected and, and reduced. And we're going to come back down here to this background copy, right click on it and hit delete layer. Yes. And then come back to our background copy, drag it down here to this little icon down here where the uh, folded paper is, and that creates a copy. So with the layer one selected where our stars are at, we're going to come over here to our eraser tool, click the eraser tool, and make sure that the opacity and the flow is set to 100%. And then now it's just a matter of choice. And we can use our bracket tools to reduce our or increase and decrease the size of our erasure tool. But once we click it once, it turns that star back on. So now it's just a matter of personal preference. And the cool thing about it is when you do this, you're, you've got some dimmer stars in the background and you're bringing out just selected stars that really starts to give you a uh, sense of depth in your image. So now it's just a matter of like personal taste. I'm just painting back those stars. So <clears throat> this is obviously going to take up a lot of the video and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to do my process and the stars I want to enhance and then I'll be right back. I'll show you how to finish up. Okay, I think I've uh, done it to my liking. I didn't turn a lot on, uh, but you can definitely tell. No star reduction. And then the star reduction. Uh, and then, like I said, I painted back some of these stars to just give them some depth. I can come in here and just show you. Again, the top layer selected. Let's just see how it turns them right back on. We can get some of these stars in here. You see that? Let me zoom back out. Well, we have a reduced stars. It really brings that nebula to the forefront. We've got some bright stars. Uh, so I just think it gives it uh, a little better contrast and it makes the overall image look a lot better. So now I've done. I want to take this layer one, right click on it, merge down. Um, and one other thing, I'm shooting with the Optolong L Enhance filter. So basically my star colors now are white and red and somewhere in between. Um, so I'm going to run this action because I want to try to increase the star color just a little bit. And I'm telling you like it's, it's negligible, but does I think make a difference so we're going to run this select brighter stars again run that action to select our stars just a minute so we've got them selected 
Now we want to modify that selection on here to select modify expand. Uh, this time we're going to expand it by three pixels. Select modify other or by two pixels. So we have a lot of stars we haven't selected, which is fine. You know, that's cool. Um, we're going to control H to hide that selection. We're going to go over here to image adjustment, uh, color balance. I want to just cool them off a little bit. And before I do that, I want to click the highlights, not the midtones. So bring over the Sienna, I'll put just the blue. And then zoom in here, so many stars. Let's find our selection again. And let me turn our preview on and off. I don't even know if you can pick it up, but I can definitely tell looking at it that I've added just a hint of blue, especially like these little, these three little stars here. So that's on, off. I'm giving them just a little bit of uh, like that blue star color that you would get when you're shooting in RGB. And overall, <laughs> you can barely tell anything, but I think you can. We'll just increase that a little bit more. Off, on. I think it brightens them up just a little bit too, the stars that we selected. Uh, and then click OK. And then we can uh, duplicate that copy always. I always like to duplicate my copies if I'm going to do an action, just because if I don't like the action, you can't go back in the history state and delete that action when you're running the astronomy action tool set. So always duplicate the copy and we can come in here and go increase star color. Um, but first thing we want to do before we duplicate that, we want to take that selection and hit control J. So the action is not touching any of the nebula. It's just working on the stars. Come in here, run the action and can increase star color and do its thing. See what that looks like. You can see it's already doing its own mask, but because we've so we've pulled that selection out, we're really protecting our nebula. And done. And on my screen on YouTube, you probably can't see, but sitting here, I can definitely see a difference. Um, and let me just merge that back down. Okay. Hopefully uh, that helps you in being able to find a way here in Photoshop CC to reduce your stars. So once again, we can turn that layer off that worked. You can see the difference. All right. Thanks for watching. Clear skies.